Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to our series on strength of materials. And we welcome you warmly once again to this channel, Making Life Easier, where we deal with problems in engineering, explain concepts, and also solve examples. So today we are looking at we are looking at how to determine the diameter of rods, giving the maximum allowable stretch. How to determine the diameter of rods, giving the maximum allowable stretch. Kindly subscribe, like, share. Leave comments and suggestions at the comment section as well. And we'll be happy to assist you if there be any challenge. Let us move quickly to our question. Two cylindrical rods, AB and BC, are welded together at B and loaded as shown. Estimate the smallest allowable values of diameter D1 and diameter D2 if the maximum allowable stress in the road should not exceed 180 mega Pascal. So in this case, we have the maximum allowable stress which the system can be allowed to hold, and we are allowed to estimate which diameters, what should be the smallest diameter which can be able to hold such amount of stress. Let's look at how to solve this problem. Good. We are asked to determine D1 and D2 from this system. How do we do that? Once again, since we have diameter D1 and D2, which are different from each other, we need to consider the sessions differently, and then we solve in that regard. Therefore, we will first consider B, C. We, first consider, oh, we can still consider A, B. So let's consider first A, B. Let's consider first A, B. We will cut through the smith point or any section on the A, B like this, and we draw our free body diagram. So considering A, B, rod A, B. So when we cut through the session, as we have looked at in our previous examples, to every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. Therefore, if you have a force pointing down, that is 40. We have a force pointing down again. That one is 55. And then the reaction at where we have cut through the member will be pointing upwards like that which we can call as FAB. So from here, we can say that, from here, we can say that FAB, if you are moving upwards, is positive, downwards, is negative. We have FAB minus 55 minus 40, because the two are all pointing downwards, and that is why they are giving a negative sign will be equal to zero according to the laws of equilibrium. And from there, we can say that for FAB will be equal to 95 kilo newtons. And we know that the allowable stress, the allowable stress in any given material will be equal to the, the load which is P, the allowable load, which is P, over the area 
Okay. We are told in this question that the maximum allowable stress in this system should be 180 mega Pascal, which is equivalent to 180 times 10 to the power six Pascal. So from here, we can say that 180 times 10 to the power six will be equal to the force which you have calculated 95 times 10 to the power three all over our area, which we don't know. So from here, we can calculate our area A equals 95 times 10 to the power three all over 180 times 10 to the power six. And from there, our A will be equal to 5.277 times 10 raised to the power negative eight meter square. Once you have been able to calculate our area, we know that area is equal to pi d square on four. So from here, we can be able to make d square the subject. From here, we can say that four times a will be equal to pi d square. And from there, we can say that d square will be equal to four a over pi. And from there also, we can say that d is equal to the square root of 4a all over, all over i. And from here, we should be able to calculate our diameter. d will be equal to the square root of our 4 times the area, which is 5. Point 277 times 10 to the power negative times 10 raised to the power negative 4. This is negative 4, not negative 8. Negative 4. Negative 4. Sorry for that. Times 10 raised to the power negative 4 all over pi, which is 3.142. And from here, our D will be equal to 0 0.0259 meters. If it is very small for you, you can convert to millimeters. So we can say that D will be equal to, if you want to convert to millimeters, we just multiply by 1000. So this will give us 25.92 millimeters, which is approximately, approximately 26 millimeters. So we have been able to determine the maximum or the smallest, not the maximum, but rather the smallest diameter for A to B if we wanted to hold a stress of 180 megapascal. Let us also look at by how much the diameter of B to C should be in order for it to be able to hold a maximum stress of 180 megapascal. So we can consider rod, rod BC. We can consider rod BC. In the same manner, we are going to cut through the mid section and we draw our free body diagram like that. So from here, we have our force pointing down, which is 40 kilonewtons. To so every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. Therefore, there will be a reaction at the cut section and we can call it FBC. So from here, our FBC will be equal, when we are moving upwards, it's positive, and when we are coming down, it's negative. Therefore, we are going to get FBC minus 40 kilonewtons will be equal to zero. And from here, we can see that our FBC will be equal to 40 kilonewtons. Therefore, we know that, so the, Area of BC to be equal to, no, we can say that our maximum allowable stress will be equal to FBC, which is our load applied over our area. And from there, we can say that allow me to clean the site so that we can be able to do our analysis at this side. Sorry for that.
Good. So it means that now we'll be able to calculate our area. And once we get the area, we can be able to use that to calculate our diameter. So let's quickly go through together. So from here, we know that our maximum stress is 180 megapascal. 180 times 10 to the power 6 is equal to FDC, which is 40 kilonewtons. And that is 40 times 10 to the power 3 all over A. And from here, our A, when we do the change of subjects, our A will be equal to 2.22 times 10 to the power negative 4. Once you have gotten A, then the D becomes very easy. We have already derived the formula that D will be equal to square root of 4A over pi. So D will be equal to the square root of 4 times A, which is 2.22 times 10 to the power negative 4 all over pi. And D will be equal to 0 0.0149 meters. And we can also convert millimeter. So we multiply it by 1,000, and that will give us 14.9 millimeter. And that can be approximately equal to 15 millimeters. So this brings us to the end of this question. That was pretty much easier. And we know that we have all understood the concepts. However, if you have any suggestions, any comments, or anything you, you didn't understand, uh, we'll be glad to know from you. And we'll be glad to also help you in understanding the concepts. Once again, we want to thank you very much for always keeping in touch with us and staying with us throughout this journey. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and hit the notification bell. We'll meet again in our next problem. But until then, we want to say goodbye.